I get a lot of questions from people, you know, asking me, when was the last time you went back home? How does it feel when you go back home? And all of that. The truth is I've not actually been back home since I moved to America. I've been here almost nine years nonstop. Um, so in some regard, you know, it's kind of hard to picture uh, what England might be like now. Um, has it changed? So right now, all I can really give you is how England was when I lived there. I think of my youth. My youth was spent a lot in my back garden, yard, my parents' back garden, just playing, you know, playing games, playing Indiana Jones, playing the Goonies. Obviously, American films influenced me quite heavily in those young days. Um, and, you know, my memory of my childhood in England is full of sunshine, which makes no sense because England is usually overcast. But in my memories, it's sunshine. I suppose that, again, <laughs> speaks to that optimistic outlook that I have. I, I tend to look back on all memories with an ounce of sunshine. Um, except that time I was stuck in Rill in Wales, just chucking it down with rain outside of Chippy. I lived, you know, as I've said before, on a, in a coastal town called Grimsby, fishing town. You know, it's, it's a far cry from Chicago, don't get me wrong. But where I lived, Wybers Wood, um, you know, a fairly idyllic place for a child anyway, to grow up and to discover him or herself, um, just playing, really. It was nice, you know, and when you think of the British coast, you might picture this. Cornwall, or Devon, or these very idyllic south coast places. Grimsby wasn't really that, or indeed the adjoining town of Cleethorpes, where the beach was actually located and still is to this day, to my knowledge. You know, it was quite a muddy beach. Condoms everywhere, though as a kid I thought they were balloons. Genuinely tried to blow one up once. Nobody was around to stop me, so left a foul taste in my mouth, literally. There was more to Grimsby than I can do justice in a short video like this, but of course I've already done justice to it in a separate video. I'll link to it at the end of this one. But I moved on. I left uh, in, in 2002 at the age of 20. I went to university and uh, that took me to Lancaster, which was on the west coast. And to get there, you have to go across you know, the Pennines. You have to go more or less through Manchester and all of that. Lancaster, smaller town than Grimsby, um, but riddled with history, goes way back. Um, of course, anybody familiar with British history might be familiar with the rivalry between the House of York and the House of Lancaster. Well, Lancaster itself as a town where I went to university, is, it's a weird place actually, because it's, it's split up into the locals, you know, the people that just sort of live there and have lived there their whole life. And then the students who caused trouble. Uh, not that I would ever do that. Um, no, that was the time where I got my binge drinking out of my system. You've heard, of course, all the stories about British people that binge drink. I was among those at one point. I got into some rather strange situations. I always want to call it a, a moment of self-discovery when I started Freshers' Week or Freshman Week, as Americans might call it. Um, and just got slaughtered every single day. And I realized I don't want to do this ever again. But for the next three years, I would do three nights out of the seven and uh, don't regret a single moment. Well, I have a few regrets. That would be, it would be a lie to say that I don't. But this area of the world is in close proximity to one of my favorite British places. That's the Lake District. I lost myself in the Lake District many a time, often not on purpose, uh, I must admit. Uh, this was before, of course, Google Maps existed, or at least in the mobile form, so it wasn't easy to just whip it out, my phone. Not. And, you know, looking for William Wordsworth's house once, um, I saw the majesty of that part of the country uh, that drove him to write some of the poems he wrote and, to, and for some of his colleagues to take opium. I didn't partake in that, I'll have you know. Great time in my life in many ways. I think 
being a student, at least in England, um, even though you have the imposition of student loans, or at least they become an imposition later on, you still feel like you can live like a king in many ways because you've got um, money coming to you and you, you squander it all on alcohol. Um, you know, great, great times and of course lots of great friends around. Um, to prop you up in that uh, department. Then I went into a sort of triangle that took me south, right? So the last place I lived in the UK was London. Um, just for a year, lived in London. It's everything that they say it is, I think, at least from the tourist standpoint. I think when you move to a major city, as I found in Chicago, you spend the first two weeks of that living like a tourist, or at least I did. And that happened in London. After a while, though, you know, things calm down. You, you realize this is actually where I live. I live here in the East End, um, which gets a bad reputation, sometimes undue. I commute to work every day. I pass by the tourists. They often outnumber the residents, it feels like. Eventually, Big Ben, Tower Bridge, Buckingham Palace, they just become part of the scenery. Um, rather than part of your photographic album. Of course, I was in my mid-twenties and didn't have a lot of money and realized that I was pricing myself out of life in many ways because it's a very expensive city. And by all accounts, London hasn't changed in this regard. And if it has, it's only gotten more expensive. Um, there is part of me, though, that thinks, you know, I'd love to give it another shot at some point. Chicago has been great because it is a lower cost of living city, at least compared to London. It's still fairly on the pricey side when you're talking about Midwest America. But I feel like I've got that city bug back, you know, and, and could certainly live there again one day. England is still very much embedded in my heart, you know, not physically, that would be excruciating pain. But it stays with you, of course. I mean, 26 years of your life, how can it not? And I will see it again. I think some of the things that have prevented that are money uh, over the years and just life in general. Life happens and you keep going and you suddenly wake up one morning and it's nine years later and you realize you've not been back in that time. You know, and that hits me every now and again if I'm having a bad day or if I've run out of coffee, <laughs> if the two usually coincide. Um, then, you know, I think about those times 